Welcome to the Home Design Mentor Channel. I'm California architect Steve Rondell. Are your hangers crooked? Hint, diagonal clothes are for Harry Potter novels. Moving on from the kitchen and dining areas we examined in the last episode, let's take a look at a home's entry and curb appeal. If there's one thing everyone complains about in houses, it's storage. No one ever seems to have enough. Is it because we have too much stuff or because of poor design? It might be a bit of both. To use space well, avoid angled corners in any room, especially in closets. This ties back to geometry, which I talked about in the last episode. Unless you need angles for a specific architectural detail, they can be problematic. A coat or entry closet is usually just inside or near the foyer of the home, like the one shown here. Angled walls inside closets create hard-to-reach corners. While you might store small items there, clothes hangers won't fit into the triangular space. Keep the rod space straight and at right angles. Make sure you can easily see and reach anything hanging in the closet. On the left of your screen is a floor plan with a small coat closet. Its interior is 24 inches deep and 36 inches wide. A 28 inch wide door opens it up. And since the door versus the interior space leaves just four inches on either side of the door, you can easily see and access anything hanging in the closet, even if it is full of coats. The coat closet shown in the floor plan on the right is a little larger than the other example. The closet measures 24 inches deep and 48 inches wide with a three foot wide double door. Once again, even if the closet is full, the extra six inches on either side of the door still allows you to see inside the hanging space. By the way, the double door lets you access half of the closet without opening a single door that would otherwise swing wide into the entry area. Either door type works, but you should consider a double versus single door panel, even if the double is a little more costly. Have you had close encounters with doors that have close encounters of their own? Hint, to avoid alien abductions via your doors, learn a trick to ensure they open without interfering with anything else. Take a look at this door opening onto another door. This setup can cause multiple problems. Door knobs can hit each other and cause dents, scrapes, or even get stuck. Imagine getting caught between two doors. While it might not happen to you, a small child or pet could easily get caught. This poor setup can lead to chipped paint, bent hardware, and damaged door frames. Avoiding doors that open against each other or other objects is easy. It's much better to arrange layouts where this problem doesn't happen. It takes some skill to avoid this trap, but this is what makes a building better. It's about avoiding things that feel annoying while you live there. Make sure doors don't bump into other doors or objects or open awkwardly. A good design doesn't irritate people. The goal is to create spaces without future problems, whether physical or emotional. As you can see, both of our preferred layouts have the entrance door fold 90 degrees on an immediate adjacent wall. Unless you have a wide entryway with side lights on in the front door, this is your preferred setup. Are your interior doors members of the Swingers Club? Hint, keep your doors straight, parallel, and perpendicular. A similar problem for door openings is what they swing into. For example, this powder room door needs to swing almost 180 degrees to fully open, which is awkward. If it's halfway open, the door sits in the middle of the room. The angled vanity counter next to the door swing makes it even worse. You'd have to move out of the way of the door before entering or exiting the room. By the way, when I draw a floor plan, I set doors that usually stay open at a 90 degree position. For doors that normally stay closed, like closet and exterior doors, I show them at a 45 degree open position. This trick helps show the doors the most likely position when in use. In this floor plan, you can see that doors usually left open fold to 90 degrees against blank walls with a doorstop. 
It's best to have doors swing 90 degrees against a doorstop on an adjacent wall. This keeps doors from swinging too fast and wide and hitting a wall, a person, or pets. The preferred arrangement also keeps doors out of the way when open and saves space. Does your entrance porch make a good first impression? Hint, informal greetings may not impress your guests. Let's look at the laundry room window on the exterior and entry porch. While it's nice to have daylight in the laundry room, this setup places a utility room visible from the main entrance. It works, but it can feel odd to see the washing machine as you approach the front door. In this new house, there's a similar problem with the bay window, right next to a side door that leads to the garage. Bay windows should ideally face a nice view, but here it looks into a secondary entrance that's not very attractive. If you also notice the bit of roof eave touching the top of the window, you have a keen eye. From inside, you would see the back of a piece of fascia material. This is an example of poor design and detailing. In this example of my Laguna model, take note of how the entrance approach leads you into a space bordered by raised planting beds. The glass block on the right side of the entrance provides a play of light, as does the screen above the porch roof. Even though the three small windows on the left look out from the powder room, the planter keeps anyone from getting too close to them. Is your garage too aggressive? Hint, send your auto storage to obedience training. Let's look at the whole house plan, especially the big protruding garage. The garage takes up the front half of the house, making it the first thing you see. This common design flaw across the United States makes the garage the main focus instead of the house. Even more peculiar is the L-shaped plan, which leaves a square area that could be used for living space. Instead of using that leftover space for the yard, why not extend the house into that area and move the garage back a couple of feet? This would create more living space and possibly make the backyard larger which is more desirable for suburban homes. In this house, the front is dominated by a giant two-car garage with a big gabled roof pointing right at you, overshadowing the small entrance porch. It makes the house look like it's hiding behind a garage. Even with a secondary gabled roof, the garage door still demands all the attention. In my Laguna model design, the garage is flush with the front of the house. However, the main entrance and planter are the real focal points, making the house more inviting and interesting. Your attention is drawn to the high peak of the entrance, not the garage. Be sure to click the like icon below the video and then subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. To avoid other floor plan mishaps and learn more tips and tricks regarding closets and bathrooms, watch part four of this series by clicking the video icon you see on your screen now. Just hover your mouse cursor over the small box image and click it. Build your happy home.